Hi everyone, how are you doing today? I was just tagged by Heather at Heather Reads and this is the Honest Booktuber tag and I've just got back from a very long and a wonderful trip um, but that means my camera, my normal camera is out of charge and I'm feeling very lazy and don't want to hook up my microphone so anyways, long story short I'm going to be doing this tag. I'm going to do it rapid fire so we're not going to do a lot of planning or anything. We're just going to answer the questions and I'm going to do some scratch art while we're doing this. Because sometimes I get comments from people and they're like, you know, what's up with the hands or what's up with the weird camera angles. Well, you know what? We'll do some scratch art. It'll be fun. It'll be relaxing. So let's go. First question is, have you ever lied about reading a book. I don't think I have. I, don't, I have not intentionally lied about reading a book. Um, it's possible I have accidentally lied about it, but I have never, never done that on purpose. Uh, question two. Have you ever avoided... Oh wait, one thing I will say about question one is sometimes if I DNF a book, or in other words don't finish a book on Goodreads, Depending how much I read of it, I will put it under red and then also tag it as abandoned or something. I think I've finally figured out now that I can have a, a shelf that's just abandoned books. Um, that's separate of the other shelves. But for a while there, I think I was just marking them as red and abandoned. Or again, depending how much I'd read of it. Maybe I felt it was worth marking it as red. But that's the only, the only exception there. Question number two, have you ever avoided a book because of controversy around the content and or the author? Um, have I ever avoided a book? I feel like I must have because I'm not very interested in controversy. And sometimes I like to let hype die down before I read something. Um, and... Yet, I can't think of any time I've intentionally avoided something because of controversy. Still, if there's hype around something, I will tend to put it off until later, until things die down, and I can kind of make more of a, a personal decision if I want to read something or not. But, no, I can't think of anything right now. Um, I will say I've never read the Harry Potter series and I understand that there's a lot more controversy around it now than there was when it came out when I was a kid. Um, so I don't have a huge desire to read it anyway, but any desire I had has kind of dissipated <laughs> because of the controversy. So maybe that's a good example. Um, it's not like the decisive reason, but it, it's a factor. Question number three. Have you ever been sent a book for free and not disclosed it? I don't think so. I don't re I don't usually read ARCs or advanced reader copies and I don't generally get free books from people um, with the purpose of reviewing them. I have read drafts for people before but those were like when the book was still a PDF and they were just friends or whatever. I don't mean just friends. You know what I mean you know, informal interactions where I wasn't necessarily leaving a review. Um, I believe if there's ever been a time I did get something for free, which might have been once or twice, I'm pretty sure I put it in my review. Um, let's see. Number four. Have you ever bought a book with no intention of reading it? <laughs> I don't think so. I have the best intentions. I just don't follow through. Question number five. Have you ever got caught up in booktube drama? Well, my channel is very niche and very small, and fortunately I've stayed out of booktube drama. Um, I've had one video recently that the algorithm favored, but it wasn't particularly controversial. I mean, there were a couple people that disagreed with me, but most of the people who watched the video um, were just like appreciative of it and it wasn't really controversial, it was more of just voicing a apparently popular opinion that just hadn't been voiced very much. 
So short answer is no, not to my knowledge. Number six, have you ever had a hate comment and did you respond? Um, you know, there's all, always comments of people that don't like my opinion or just, you know, I've certainly gotten some comments that were very highly critical of my opinion <laughs> and I don't take them that seriously. Um, the way I see it is if somebody doesn't like my opinion, YouTube is free and I would really encourage them to make their own review and put in the time and effort to do that because, I mean, I think sometimes viewers come across your video and maybe it's, especially in my case, maybe it's the only video on the book on YouTube or maybe it's like one of a handful of videos about the book on YouTube. So the thing is, um, it's still my opinion, and just because I'm one of the few people talking about it doesn't mean I have to, like, represent all the readers of it, right? So I would really suggest to those people, if they don't like that I've said something about the book on my platform, they should really just um, make their own review and join the conversation. Question seven. Oh, and by the way, I don't generally reply to those kinds of comments. I see them, but I try not to reply to them usually. It doesn't really do any good. And I don't delete them either. I, I'm glad people want to express themselves and I encourage them to do so, but I don't usually respond. Number seven, have you ever made a video just because you knew it would get views? Actually, yes. So one of the things that I've decided with my channel, because I'm just a small channel and I don't, I'm not trying to like make a business out of my channel. It's just a hobby. Um, still, I like to get viewers, obviously. But I review a lot of niche books, stuff people have just not talked about much or even heard of really. And the way I see it is I can make videos like that to my heart's desire, but if I really want people to find my channel, sometimes I do have to make videos about things that are more mainstream, right? Um, so something I'll do is every so often I'll make a video that is more mainstream, especially if it's uh, related to something happening in pop culture. For example, um, I released my Mulan poetry reading about when the Mulan movie came out, the Mulan remake, which I didn't end up watching actually, but I knew that it was a good time to read it and post it. And I, I wanted to do it for the sake of it anyway, I wanted to read the poem. But the timing was very intentional and that video did really well because people were searching for Mulan at the time. And I did the same thing with my Little Mermaid reading. I timed that with the Disney remake. Um, there's been, I guess the Emily Dickinson video too, which for the longest time was my most popular video. I released that one when there was an Emily Dickinson TV series that had just come out or was coming out. Again, I didn't watch that. <laughs> but took advantage of the moment. And it doesn't always work out that well. Like, I don't think my Little Mermaid video really did that well at all. I enjoyed reading it. I really enjoyed... Oh wait, I take that back. I had to take so many takes of that reading. So I didn't actually enjoy the process that much, but I was very happy with the result. And to some extent really enjoyed it because I'm a big fan of Hans Christian Andersen. But yeah, I would say that video didn't do as well as I expected, and that, that's okay. I still like the video. Um, what's next here? If you could go back to the beginning of your channel, would you do anything differently? Um, I think my first videos were just bookshelf tours, and quite honestly, um, I wasn't planning on starting a channel. I just made the bookshelf tours, people liked them, and I thought, okay, I could, I could 
make more videos about books because I was already blogging and I was getting, I, I mean I have like, there's friends of mine on Blogger and WordPress who we, we continually comment on each other's posts and I love that. Um, but I think in general the blogging community has gotten a lot smaller over the years and I was just getting a lot of comments and engagement on YouTube videos so that's why I ended up doing a lot of YouTube over the last several years. Um, but to actually answer the question, um, I don't think I'd do anything differently. I mean, my channel's always been a little odd and a little niche, but that's okay. Um, my desktop setup is actually inspired by an ASMR, uh, artist, um, the French Whisperer. That's where I got the idea of doing the desktop settings, which might have gotten a lot more, uh, let's just say informal in recent times. Um, not nearly as elaborate as I used to do. Not for a lack of wanting to, but I think just lack of inspiration. Anyways, let me just answer the question. I think the answer is no. I don't think I would do anything differently. Um, maybe how I interact with the community, I would handle that differently, but it's kind of another, another story. Uh, do, 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 do. Question nine. Are there any channels you wish you could be more like? You wish you could be more like? Um, no, I guess not. I like how everybody's different. I enjoy the people's channels whom I follow. And the fact that we're all a little different is what makes it fun. It's the personality. I don't think there's anybody I'm hoping to emulate at this point. I do like, I mean, speaking of Heather, who tagged me, I do like how her videos are structured and um, and she puts a lot of research, I would say, into her videos, especially the Middlemarch series, which is really good. I don't even like Middlemarch, as some of you know, but love her Middlemarch series. Um, I used to do a lot more research and video prep. Haven't done as much recently. So maybe that's more like something I'd like to get back into. Uh, question 10. What's something you love about your channel? Something I love about my channel. Um, I really appreciate all the people who regularly watch and comment. I mean, some of you guys, like, I recognize your names, and we've interacted a lot over the past couple of years. And that means a lot to me. Um, and if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be doing videos, to be honest, because, like, um, I think blogging is a lot lower effort. And, you know, I do have, like I said, a lot of friends still on Blogger and WordPress. Um... But I feel like I've been meeting more new people on YouTube, and I just love that. And again, the people that have stuck around a while, like that, that means a lot. Um, yeah. Question 11. Tag some people. Um, I don't think I'm going to tag anybody, but if you'd like to do this, feel free. Consider yourself tagged, and let me know if you do it. I didn't realize that this scratch art was going to be all gold, but I guess I should have been looking at the reference photo this whole time. Because that's exactly what it is. It's all gold. So, anyways. Thanks for watching. I'll have more, like, book reviews and stuff coming soon. And I'll see you next time. Bye!